What's up everybody, Barrett here back again with Spec of Tech. Welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about the budget-friendly Polk R200 bookshelf speakers. Should you buy these or should you hold out longer and buy something more expensive? I hope to help answer that question for you today. In my unboxing and first impression video that's linked in the top right-hand corner of this video, I stated that these speakers had me questioning if higher-end speakers were worth it. I still feel that way and we will get into all that as well as play some demos for you. Let's get things started with the price. At the time of this recording, the R200s are on sale for $599 US dollars per pair, but the regular price is $749 US dollars. If you do want to know what the current pricing is, just click the link down in the description. I absolutely think that these speakers are worth their price. I know that this has become a cliche, but they do punch above their weight. They offer a nice looking, well-built speaker that has impressive sound quality, but before we move along to sound, let's talk about that build quality and the aesthetics. They are a nice looking speaker, uh, but it doesn't offer a nice premium finish that would be something that you'd get with a more expensive speaker. But with the price this low, it does look nice for what you get. For me personally, this is a good looking speaker. No, it's not the nicest looking speaker I've seen. Uh, for me personally, that is still the Paradigm 40B bookshelf speakers, but the tweeter does look nice with the woofer and it does blend well with the black cabinet. One thing that did surprise me considering the price point is the nice looking binding posts. Normally in a cheaper speaker like this or a more budget friendly speaker like this, you're gonna get binding posts that have a plastic surround with plastic nuts. Uh, it's nice to see that Polk used a metal surround with uh, all metal binding posts. And when it comes to the vinyl wrap itself, it looks good. But obviously when you spend more, you typically get a better looking speaker with more premium finishes. But when you compare the Polk R200 to some of the other speakers that I have in my room, like the Paradigm 40Bs or the Focal 906 or Aria 906s, or even uh, now I recently got the Axiom uh, M5HP speaker, it isn't as premium of a finish, I guess. Uh, when you do spend more, they do, of course, make more of an effort to make the speaker look more premium. Uh, so when comparing looks or aesthetics alone, of course, if you spend more money, you're going to get a nicer looking speaker. So this speaker can't really compare, in my opinion, to the looks of the more expensive speakers. Okay, it's time to talk about the sound, starting from the top with the treble. Uh, real quick before we do, consider subscribing if you want to see these speakers compared to the likes of the Paradigm 40Bs or the Focal Aria 906, or even the Sonus Faber Sonetto 2s, and a few other secret pairs that I have in the works. If you subscribe, tick the bell icon if you do, and please take just one short second to hit that like button. I always do appreciate it. All right, so treble. The treble is fairly neutral. It's not in your face like a clip speaker or even the Focal. It's smooth and not fatiguing, but at loud volumes, it does border on the lines of fatiguing. Uh, at lower volumes though that most people would listen at, it is super smooth and easy to listen to. There is a lot of detail retrieval with these speakers. Yes, I have heard better, albeit with more expensive speakers, uh, but unless you prioritize detail retrieval above all else, you should be happy with the amount of detail retrieval of this ring radiator tweeter. This tweeter uh, is without harsh sibilance. Songs like Alive by Empire of the Sun and Burn by Ellie Goulding, which are known to be quite sibilant, do not have that harsh sibilance that some speakers with boosted treble uh, would have. All in all, it is a good tweeter and it is very well implemented. Let's move on to the mid-range coming from that unique turbine driver. Uh, it is actually a good, rich mid-range. There's great detail. Instruments sound real with a rich warmth. Even though these speakers are fairly neutral and measure quite flat, they still have a good warmth when it's called for in the song. Voices like Michael Bublé or Louis Capaldi are well represented with this mid-range. Female vocals are also very well represented with a silky smooth sound. All in all, it is a great mid-range that stays within its lane and it's well-rounded just like the treble. Let's move on to the bass, which is something this bookshelf does actually very well. Uh, it has a strong bass presence for a bookshelf speaker. Songs like Billie Eilish, Bury a Friend uh, have a great rumble and a great punch. Kick drums are also convincing and provide some of that deep undertone that makes it sound more authentic. In all honesty, I could see some of you being tempted to use these without a subwoofer in a smaller room, uh, which I believe could be done, but I always recommend a good subwoofer or two for a bookshelf speaker for the best bass experience. These bookshelf speakers actually do give off a little bit of a tower feel, especially when you stand a little bit farther back from them. They have a very large bass sound. So yet again, with the bass experience, it is very well-rounded. With its relatively quick bass that can also provide tangible rumble, I think you're probably seeing the theme here. Uh, these speakers offer a very well-rounded sound. But while we are still talking about bass, let's talk about that port. 
Polk claims that it helps reduce port noise or what some people know it as chuffing. With songs like Billie Eilish's Bury a Friend, there is a little bit of port noise there. Uh, this can't be escaped with a bookshelf speaker that has some pretty solid bass performance like this speaker does, unless of course you don't use a port, but then it's also more difficult to get that bass performance. So I always, like I said, recommend that you run these speakers with a subwoofer. And if you do do this, there won't be an issue with having port noise. So does this uh, X port eliminate port noise? Well, not entirely. Uh, with songs that have a normal amount of bass that also have other sounds going on during the bass sequences, you're not going to hear any noise. But with songs where everything else goes quiet to provide a rumbly bass tone, you will hear some port noise uh, at louder volumes. That would remain true with pretty much any ported bookshelf speaker with a convincing bass presentation though. Now that we know the sound is well done and well rounded, what about soundstage and imaging? Again, these little budget Polk R200s perform very well. Uh, keep in mind that my room isn't acoustically treated as of yet. It's something that I wanna work on in the near future, but it isn't treated yet. So I am getting these results without any treatment. The soundstage is wide with songs like Vogue by Madonna or Thriller by Michael Jackson. You can hear sounds that extend beyond the sides of the speakers. And in some instances, you can hear it coming from your walls or even a little bit beyond. You can also hear sounds above and below the edges of the speakers. Uh, there were some instances throughout my listening that I heard sound above me and even slightly behind me and above me. The imaging is also well done within that sound stage. Uh, instrument locations can be identified in the sound stage, like with the song, The Man Who Sold the World by Nirvana Unplugged. Guitars and the drums can be uh, heard from the side of Kurt Cobain's voice, which is right in the middle. So yet again, I can't really fault these speakers, especially when considering their price point, but even when ignoring the price point, these are a very well-rounded speaker with price out of the equation entirely. It actually reminds me of a very well-known quote, uh, but most people don't know the full quote. And the quote is, a jack of all trades, but a master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one. So in this case, uh, this speaker is just very well rounded altogether. It does everything quite well. It doesn't necessarily master anything, but it is very well rounded, which again really makes me wonder, are more expensive speakers really worth it? Uh, unless you want that extra 10 or 20% of performance for significantly more money, or maybe you just want that more premium finish, I would say that these speakers are definitely good enough. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that in a very good way. So really that's up to each of you individually to answer within yourself. All I can tell you is that these speakers offer great performance. And when you take their price into account, they are even more impressive. You guys know that I like to be 100% honest on this channel. So I'm going to tell you something that I actually haven't told anybody no, I haven't told anybody this yet. Um, with listening to these speakers, it had me strongly considering just going with their bigger brother, the R700 Towers, and getting five of them versus buying more expensive speakers because they are just that good. Of course, I would be missing out on a little bit because I do have uh, Sonus Faber speakers coming. I haven't heard them, so maybe I will be blown away and be extremely happy that I went with Sonus Faber. But at the same time, like I said, after hearing these, I strongly considered just getting the R700 Towers and calling it a day. Because I'm at a point in my home theater or in my, or even my two channel listening that I don't necessarily desire or want to uh, pursue that extra 10 or 20% at this time. Not that I may not want to do that in the future, but right now at this time, I, I'm starting to second guess spending incredible amounts of money just to get that extra little bit of percentage of performance for my system. So if you are that person, if you're starting to second guess that, or maybe you've already come to the point where you just don't care about that extra 10 or 20%, I do honestly believe that you should give these speakers a try. The R200s or even their bigger brothers, the R700s. Links are down in the description below if you want to check them out, guys. But as usual, I did promise you guys some demos. Uh, so I will be using the AVM90 in stereo mode without Anthem Room Correction enabled and without any subwoofers. So for power, I'm using the new Prime AMG STA Class D amplifier, which is a stereo amplifier. It puts out about 120 watts per channel into 8 ohms and 200 watts per channel into 4 ohms. It's a Class a module made it to a class d power supply so it's a pretty fantastic little amplifier uh, before we play the demos though that always comes with a disclaimer and that is that my recording equipment my room as well as the device that you listen on will greatly affect the sound so don't take this as an accurate depiction of what i'm hearing in my room and for the best results use a good pair of headphones or even use your home theater or your two channel system to listen to these demos <laughs> Thank you. 
you enjoyed those demos as well as this video remember to subscribe if you want to stay updated with all the comparisons i have coming up tick the bell icon if you do subscribe and please take just one short second to hit that like button i always do appreciate it remember to enjoy your systems regardless of how much you've spent i'll see you on the next one cheers